Um, another trick that you do is, uh, as I'm lacing it up, you've already drilled the holes, but they tend to fill up with little pieces of bark, so you want to take something like this little flat screwdriver, and right before you put the stuff in, you just push through the hole like that, and just kind of ream the hole out so that the lacing material goes into it more easily. And then uh, as I'm lacing, I like to take my little screwdriver and push the material through the hole. You can use an awl, you can use a screwdriver, you can use all types of just anything that's pointy like that. You could use a craft needle and sew these up. I just find it goes quicker if I use something to push it through. But do make sure before you push the stuff through that you just kind of open the hole up a little bit because otherwise you tend to split the bark because there's not enough space for the lacing material to go through. And another little uh, trick is to take the end of whatever you're lacing with and take some beeswax or something like that and just make it as thin and sharp as you can so it's almost like a natural needle and so it doesn't come unfrayed. The buckskin's not going to come unfrayed but if you're using hemp twine or something like that, the strings try, tend to frizz up on you so this will keep them intact if you wax them down um, to hold them together. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and lace this one up and then I'll show you how to do the finish the lacing and how to do the top in just a minute. Okay, now the sides are laced up and uh, I'm going to show you how to do the finishing touches when you lace up the sides. Okay, as I talked about earlier, some of the bark is folded under the other piece, so one of the first things I like to do is make sure that it is out so that it's even. So I'm going to pry it out, make it nice and even. Even it up. Okay, then you want to make sure that things are securely laced. So the way to do that is to go down to the bottom and take whatever it is that you're using to lace it with and just pull each one of them snug. So I've taken the slack out of that, now I'll come up underneath this one, take the slack out of it, I'll come up to this one, take the slack out of it. If you pull too hard, you can rip the bark. So pull it nice and snug, but don't rip your bark. Pull this one snug, pull this one snug, pull this one snug, and then you're gonna tie it off. How you do this is totally up to you. There's a million different ways you can do it. You can just put a big knot on the inside that won't pull through. If you're doing it with the cross stitch, you're going to be tying the two pieces together. If you're doing that with the cross stitch where you got to tie the two pieces together, let's say I've laced it up and they're both coming out, uh, a little trick that I've learned is to run them back through the other side. Wrap them around the top one two or three times and then tie them and there's less likelihood that they're going to come undone and it just makes for a much sturdier tie off when you get up to the top. Okay, so then we're going to tie that off. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. It's sunken in. So I'm going to make sure that the bark matches up, as we discussed earlier. Then the same thing. I'm going to come down to the bottom, and I'm going to start pulling to tighten it up with my tool. Snugged it up, snugged it up. And I'm going to keep doing that all the way to the top. Then when I get to the top, I'm going to tighten it up, and I'm going to tie it off inside of here. and then the sides are done. Okay, they're laced up. Now the next step is to put the reinforcement band on the top. This is a very important step because this is what holds the shape of the basket. If you leave it like this, by the time it dries, this bark will be all types of different ways of lopsidedness. Um, it'll shape however it wants to. So by putting this on the top, you can keep it from getting lopsided. If Also, if there are cracks near the top, putting the reinforcement band just strengthens them and it doesn't matter if you get little cracks. This is fairly common. Um, as we discussed earlier, and it's not a problem with the reinforcement band. Now, I usually put two of them for the sake of time. Um, on this video, I'm just going to do one. But I usually do one on the outside of the basket, and I usually do one on the inside of the basket. And then when you lace that up, that makes a very sturdy top of the basket. And however you shape this is going to shape the form of your basket. So if you want a very round basket, you would tighten it up into a circular shape. If you want more of an elongated basket, you would do something more like this. But whatever shape you make this reinforcement band, that's the shape the opening of your basket is going to take when it dries. Okay, so you're going to want to do this, and a little hint that uh, you know most people do this use this. I don't even always do it. I can sometimes just hold it by hand. Uh, well, one hint is make sure you have enough material to overlap a little bit. If you wrap it around to where the ends just meet up, and then when it dries, they will tend to play out like that. It doesn't look very good. So make sure you have enough to overlap at least a little bit, and that makes the ring of your basket, the rim of your basket, look a lot better. Okay, the other hint, as I was saying, is to take just some, uh, you can use clamps or you can use clothespins. And as you're working on this, just uh, just clamp it on there with your clothespins or with your clamps, whatever it is that you're using. And that just makes it easier because then you've got both hands free to lace with. Otherwise, you're, uh, you're going to be fighting this, trying to hold it together with one hand while you lace with the other. I said after you do a few hundred baskets, uh, you can do that anyway. It's not a big deal. 
so I don't always use these, but as you're a novice beginning, you definitely are going to want to do this to hold your shape. Okay, so just get it the way you want it. Um, clip it on here, and then you're going to just do the same thing we've been doing. Just pick a starting point. I usually like to start at the sides because that's where most of my knot tying is at, and it's where it le looks least conspicuous. And you're just going to whip over the top. You can do cross stitches over the top. I usually just whip stitch them. So I'm going to go all the way around. And what I like to do is go all the way around and then come back a couple times. Again, that just makes it more solid. And then I'm going to do the same little trick where I pulled out the sides to tighten them up on the top. I'm going to pull that up on every single one and tighten them up so that there is no slack in it and it's nice and tight. And then once I get that done, the basket will be done. And then we just have to let it dry. It takes about two weeks for the spark to dry out. It will lose most of its weight. It will become extremely lightweight. It will lose the moisture so it will become lighter. And then it will be solid. It will be in the shape you want. And uh, once you get the basket done, I'll show you in a minute, you've got to have something to help it hold its form or the bark will curl in. Okay, piece, I saw stuff paper sacks in them sometimes. Don't put plastic because plastic holds moisture in. It will mildew inside there and mold and you have to throw it away. Put all your sacks in there or I'll take a piece of wood. Sometimes I do both in the top to hold the rim open. I'll put it right where the uh, lacings come together because uh, if you don't do that it tends to want to curl in. So I'll put a stick up here and then sometimes I'll stuff it with sand or I'll stuff it with uh, put with uh, paper bags or whatever to hold its form. It takes about two weeks to dry. But basically once I lace this we're done except for we will put our handle on it, our strap. And you can tie your strap either to your lacing or you can tie it to your reinforcement band. It's up to you. Or you can drill a couple new holes and you can just uh, tie it in another fashion. That's totally up to you. But when we get done, here in a minute I'll show you the finished product. When we get done we'll have a basket with a hanging strap on it and uh, it'll be nice and it won't weigh hardly anything. It'll be nice and sturdy and lightweight and it's a really cool basket design. It's been around for probably thousands of years. Okay, now we've finished lacing around the top of this basket. The sides are laced up. Uh, the bark is even. That's the way I want it. There's a little bit of overlap on the lacing material, so I'm going to cut just a little bit of that off. So there's no sharp edges sticking out. Okay, and this one's essentially done. Now all you got to do is put your strap on to the top of it, however you want to. There's lots of methods to do this. And what I've shown you today is just one way. There are at least a hundred ways to make these baskets. There are no two alike. Every single one is unique because of the bark, because of the methods you use in making them. Um, there's no absolutely right or wrong way to do it. It's just however you want to, and it's whatever you're trying to accomplish by making the basket. Um, but I've just shown you a few little tricks that should help you with any technique that you use. Um, it depends on the purpose of my basket. If I'm wanting to make something for someone who really doesn't care uh, about the artistic value, they just want a neat little basket to carry something around in, I'll do it one way. If there's someone who really uh, cares about the artistic work or really cares about the structural integrity or how well built the basket is, I'll do it in a different way. So there's just a million different ways to do these, but I just want to show you a few little hints on how to do it and introduce you to this uh, art of making tulip poplar bark baskets and here's the finished product I'll probably put a piece of wood in here to space this out the bark's not trying to fold in on itself very much so I don't think I'll stuff anything down in it I'll probably just put a spacer at the top hang it up let it dry for about two weeks and we have a functional finished little basket okay thanks for watching